flaky, nasty lizard skin. This is going to be a first impression on the new Anastasia Beverly Hills stick foundation. This foundation is much anticipated and I'm excited to try it although it is supposed to be a little bit better for normal combination to oily skin. So I'm very dry so, so we'll see. I don't have crazy high hopes for this to work for me. But I already did my eye makeup. It costs 25 US dollars, which is actually kind of inexpensive for a high-end stick foundation. Comparatively, the Makeup Forever one costs $44, I believe, and the Hourglass one costs even more. This comes with 9 grams of product, or 0.32 ounces of product. It's more than what the Hourglass stick foundation comes with and less than what the Makeup Forever one comes with. It doesn't contain any SPF. It comes in 28 different shades, so chances are you will be able to find a shade for you. It is ideal for travel because it's so compact and a stick foundation is not messy. Some of the claims are that it's a natural matte finish that's highly pigmented, buildable coverage. You can use it sheer and use it like a tinted moisturizer or you're supposed to be able to build it up to create full coverage. It's supposed to be pretty versatile in that respect. Today I'm gonna apply it and test it out for you, see what the wear is like, see if it's transfer proof, how much coverage I can get out of this thing and all that jazz. I tend to have very dry skin and like sheer coverage so this foundation isn't necessarily geared towards me, but uh, let's try it out. So I'm going to break up my face into quadrants. I'm going to put a hydrating primer on the lower half of my face. And then on the left half, I'm going to use a brush. And the right half, I'm going to use a sponge. So up here, it's going to be just a brush, no primer, brush and primer, sponge, no primer, sponge with primer. My main concerns are redness and texture, so we'll see how this foundation deals with those things. For our brush, I'm going to use my favorite Urban Decay foundation brush. The shade I have is Warm Porcelain. This foundation consistency reminds me a little bit of the Cream Contour Palettes from Anastasia. It's a little bit more of a thicker cream, a little bit harder to blend. It's thick, but it's not full coverage right off the bat. On the area with the primer, on the lower half, it glides on way easier. The hydrating primer that I used was the Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer in Hydrating. The shade I have is a little bit lighter than my skin tone right now, but I'm okay with that because I still have a little bit of a tan and I'm going to be getting much fairer in the winter months. Up on my forehead, I have a lot of textural issues, so let's see how it works with that. Before I go on to the second layer, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this side of my face with my sponge. I'm just using a dampened beauty blender. It's not blending out really with the beauty blender or at least it's taking a lot longer too because I can't really use a swiping motion, I have to use a patting motion. It definitely feels less dry because the sponge is damp. I feel like it's like very very little coverage with the amount I'm putting. So this is one layer of the foundation. Let me zoom you guys in. It definitely collects around the dry patches of my face, but I expected that because this wasn't really meant for dry skin types. Right in here I have a bunch of dryness. You can see the texture. It sinks into my pores a little bit. 
And up here you can especially see it collect around the texture. The areas that I have the hydrating primer feels much nicer than the areas I don't. And it looks a little bit smoother. The coverage is not much at this point. Okay, so let's see how buildable this coverage is. Oh wow, I can almost see a distinct line for where I put primer and where I didn't. Right up here is where I stopped with the primer and it's totally, totally catching on my dryness. My flaky, nasty lizard skin. I forgot to say that you're supposed to be able to contour with these too. Okay, second layer with the sponge. Oh my god, it's so hard to blend out with this beauty blender. It just stays put. I wonder what Anastasia says to use with this foundation. Like what brush? I should look that up, see what she says. It feels almost powdery to the touch. It's definitely a natural matte finish. The coverage is like medium when I did a second layer. I can definitely feel the makeup on my face. It's not as weightless as like the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. So this side with the Beauty Blender is patchy. I was having a really hard time blending it out. This side I, I prefer it so much more with the brush, although it felt nice and hydrating with the sponge. I think next time what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it with a spritz of MAC Fix Plus. It just catches on the dry patches, which I mean, I can't really blame them for because they did say that this is more for not dry skin types. For this last layer, I'm going to try spritzing my brush with the MAC Fix Plus. giving my beauty blender a little spritz. I haven't put this much foundation on in a long time. This is really weird for me. I like this last layer the best with that spritz of MAC Fix Plus. Man, it really is working a lot easier. It doesn't feel like it's quite set fully yet. It has a beautiful finish. I like this natural matte finish. It has a really nice sort of velvety look on the skin. I forgot to show you guys the packaging. So this is what the box looks like. Pretty standard box. It has the shade on here. It comes with a slip on the inside that shows you how to contour with it. And then on the other side it has the ingredients. And like all of Anastasia's products, this product is cruelty free. It's paraben free, all that good stuff. The actual stick foundation is this metal packaging, really beautiful. It has a rose gold edge and it has Anastasia Beverly Hills written here. And then the little logo on the top and the color on the bottom. And the full amount of product looks like this. And like I said, it has less product than a Makeup Forever stick foundation and more product than an Hourglass foundation, stick foundation. Okay, so now that my full face is on, I think that this foundation looks really beautiful. It looks so perfect, except for the areas where I have little flaky dry patches. Everywhere else looks really beautiful. And from here down, it looks gorgeous. And that's with my primer. I do like the side that I use my brush better. Over here the coverage is a little patchy just because of the way I applied it with the sponge. Inconsistent coverage. I don't know how else to describe it but velvety. Alrighty, I'm not gonna spritz my face with my Skinnavia finishing spray even though I pretty much do that daily. I'm gonna let this foundation do its thing with what we've got on it now and I will check in with you a few hours from now. Right now it's 11, hold on, right around 11.30 and so I'm gonna check in with you in a few hours and we'll see how it's worn. 
Hey guys, so I am on my third cup of tea of the day. This lipstick is wearing really well, actually. It is now 1.48. I haven't found that the foundation has really oxidized much at all. It actually doesn't seem like it ever really dried down completely. It's kind of transfery and I mean, I used a light amount of powder, but the areas where I didn't really use a whole lot of powder, it seems almost slightly tacky still, which is really weird for a matte foundation, I think. But it definitely feels like a foundation that would move if I was sweating or if I was to like rub my face, I feel like it would kind of move. So I don't know, I don't really love that about it. Maybe it's meant to really be set with powder, like a setting setting powder, but I don't know. Otherwise, the way it looks, it looks exactly the same, I think. Hey guys, there are a couple notable changes. This fine line right around my mouth slash nose definitely has become a little bit more accentuated. Normally what I would do is I would go ahead and pat that to kind of make it look even again. But since this is a first impression, so I'm going to leave it alone and see what it does. Everywhere else looks pretty much the same. It was really hard to build up full coverage. And even now that I have three layers of this on, it doesn't look full coverage to me it looks like medium coverage <laughs> so I don't know I mean I would use this as what it is as a sheer matte foundation which is nice because I don't really have any sheer matte foundations I don't think I think I'm gonna use it with my cover effects radiance oil and pat that on my skin a little bit before I go in with my foundation I have a feeling it's gonna glide on super smooth and like really beautiful with that Okay, so it's around 8.30. I've been wearing this makeup for about 9 hours. I think that this makeup has deteriorated around certain areas of my face. Alright, so right around my chin. This happens a lot because I tend to touch my chin, rub it, that kind of thing. And right around my nose. But for the most part, it's pretty intact. It looks fairly good. It's worn pretty well. For having three layers, it's really not that bad. So my final thoughts about this makeup is that I like it, I enjoy it. If I were to use it again, I would use it definitely with a hydrating base and with a brush, a dampened brush. I think that I would put less on as well and use it on days where I don't want a whole lot of coverage. Things are starting to peek through a little bit, a little bit of redness here and there. But that's not too unusual for me for eight hours of wear. It's really doing pretty well. It's one of those foundations that I feel like it never really fully set. It's almost like it's sitting on top of my skin and I can wipe it off fairly easily if I wanted. I think that with the use of my Scandinavia setting spray, it would kind of take care of that feeling. I hope that this first impressions was somehow useful for you. I think that somebody with slightly more normal skin slash oily skin might like this foundation even better than somebody like me who has very dry skin because it definitely doesn't do many favors for the very dry patches. But overall, it's a really beautiful natural matte finish and I think that for the price, it's decent. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Join my Cake Face family. Leave me a big thumbs up to let me know if you like this video. And uh, yeah, I will catch you in my next one. Bye loves.